Good afternoon. This is the Global Stock Investor Show. Welcome, Global Investors. Uh, today, I'll be going over the financial sector, part two. Uh, but before I jump into that, uh, just going to give you guys a little background where I've been. Um, pretty much, I was in South America. Um, the last video I did was Sunday. Um, so pretty much I was traveling from South America to California Monday and Tuesday. Um, so today's Wednesday. So I was kind of on edge just trying to just thinking about making a video. Uh, pretty much this is my uh, therapy. And, you know, I've just been doing a lot of thinking and, um, you know, about investing and pretty much um, I'm thankful for my new subscribers and people that I've been Pretty much anybody that's a Robin Hood investor, uh, my hat's off to you. I know this is a long journey. Um, I just pretty much was just thinking like on clarity, on pretty much investing in the stock market. And I've just noticed a lot of people that I've seen so far, I mean, my hat's off to them, but I just seem like a lot of people don't have clarity. They really don't understand what they're really doing. They're pretty much, they're talking um, you know, for example, they're looking at this one day, one week, um, one month, uh, three months. You know, all this is really, if you're a long-term investor, for me, uh, under, trying to understand this game is pretty much, these are for traders. If you're a trader, this is what you focus on, you know, because it fluctuates so much, you know, within, within, um, within, a day, a week, one month, three months, one year. But to me, I'm a long-term investor, so I focus on um, on the all, pretty much everything from the beginning, from when I first started investing till now. So pretty much my main focus is, um, as you can see, my percentage is 4.38%. So I pretty much, um, I'm close to 6%. That's my goal for 2019 but i have to keep that six percent all the way through and even you know when we go through a um a bear market or a correction that i still want to stay um three to six percent i don't want to drop like i like the lesson i learned here um this is the, uh, like it was just a, a horrible feeling to go through it i don't want to go through it again so now i'm teaching myself like the fundamentals and basics or not to reached that slump again so what I found out was I was pretty much uh, my portfolio consisted of 95% stocks so that's why I got hit so hard and I'm just learning now to um, allocate um, my funds so pretty much my assets under management um, for 2019 my strategy is 60% stocks 30% index funds 5% bonds ETF and then 5% REITs so pretty much, um, I'm starting to fill in those uh, slices. I just bought um, a bond, my first bond ETF, and then I bought another REITs. So pretty much, with my strategy, um, I'm gonna get into get into it a little more deeper. But pretty much, with REITs, they pay out monthly, and uh, bonds they pay out. I gotta find, see when they pay out, whether it's monthly, uh, quarterly, or or yearly but pretty much what I'm gonna start looking at is I know they're, they're pretty much dividends are like they're in cents but what my strategy um, that I'm gonna start looking at is um, start adding to those companies to make a, an even dollar so pretty much I when I see my dividends whether it's monthly quarterly or annually that they all minimum pay a dollar Whatever I have to get that uh, that stock to to pay a dollar instead of you know thirteen cents, fourteen cents, uh, fifty cents, seventy cents, eighty cents, whatever I'm at. Like say for example, I have a stock that's eighty cents. I'll buy another stock of it, and it so it be an eighty cents. So eighty plus another eighty, a dollar and sixty. So I won't even touch that no more. So pretty much, uh, whatever company pays dividends, I'm gonna get those companies to a dollar so I can start tracking month getting paid in dollars so pretty much my strategy say exact I'm currently at 74 companies here 
as you can see. Um, I'm just I'm a investor in sectors, so I've noticed a lot of YouTubers like they'll buy like massive amounts of like Apple. They'll buy like 50 shares. Um, you know, Facebook they'll they'll buy like 30 shares. Nvidia 20 shares. Uh, uh, Visa they'll have like 40 shares. You know, but me my my philosophy is pretty much. Um, investing in sectors so I could pretty much look at okay say the tech sector so Google Netflix um, ba Badu Apple Facebook Nvidia um, those are to me those are my, the the technology sector so once I start looking at how the tech sector is doing pretty much that's how I'm gonna start gauging um, my investments off of that and then once I pretty much when once I get my now I'm building up my my structure, pretty much my pillars. So that's why you always see one share, but pretty much I'm at 74 uh, stocks that I own individually. So pretty much I'm I'm investing in sectors. So um, once and then once I see like how the sectors grow, then I'll start adding. You know, find out what companies I could get to a dollar, um, um, minimum dollar um, dividends. So I won't be paid in cents, and I could track track it more. And pretty much, say for example, I got a hundred companies that have that pay dollar dividends. So pretty much, that's a hundred dollars that I know that I'll be getting monthly. And then once I see a pattern in that, then I'll start adding um, another dollar to that dollar. So I have so these companies instead of me getting paid monthly, the one hundred companies that are that I'm getting paid a um, hundred dollars, I'm gonna add another dollar. And then now it'll be two hundred dollars a month that I'd be getting dividends, so that's how I'm pretty much approaching investing, just small increments. And I just notice people are just too excited. They, 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 they talk like this. They're like, "Oh man, look at my one day. Oh, look at my one week. You know, like look at look how much I've you know." And it's just like it, it's crazy talk because it that's it's just. Yeah, you're excited because you know, like, look at wow, I'm I'm at six point four three percent and I'm and I'm up three hundred and fifty eight. But that's pretty not the real gauge, you know. That for people that are traders, like uh, day traders and swing traders, this is a perfect analysis for them. But you know, for you guys that are talking about, I'm a long term investor. This is this is how it's this is how the game is. And I know, you know, Warren Buffett and. Uh, Ray Dalio and all these guys, they beat around the bush. They really don't tell, like, how to really invest, you know. And you have some that don't diversify and then, and some say diversify. And it's just so much confusion. But I'm just looking at it now as pretty much investing in when it comes to stocks in sectors. When it comes to index funds, the index fund is pretty much uh, a culmination of a, a bunch of companies, a hundred 200 300 company and that's pretty much when um, the market goes down pretty much the, your index funds will keep you afloat from stocks because stocks are highly volatile no matter how you look at it you know say I get a um, hundred shares of Microsoft you know what if tomorrow it just the whole company just goes out you know that's you just you just lost a hundred shares in Microsoft because you you're playing that game um but pretty much my strategy is pretty much g go into it little by little baby steps you know i just notice people are just going way too full-fledged into investing in there you know they get overwhelmed and it's like there's um there's so many companies out there that pay other dividends and you know once i hit a hundred um once i get a hundred here i'm gonna go over my portfolio you know, and show you guys what I invest in, and pretty much I invest in in sectors. You see, uh, it, uh, you know, um, dividends I get. I was buying buying companies. You know, I bought this company with dividends, that with a dividend, those with dividends. You know, yeah, they're little, yeah, they're companies that you know they're one dollar, two dollar, three. But I bought companies with dividends that I made from other companies. So I'm pretty much playing that game until you know I could get that snowball effect. But as of now, um. Pretty much, it, this is all fundamentals, you know, like playing basketball. You got to learn how to dribble. You got to learn how to shoot a layup. You, you got to learn the fundamental. You got to learn how to pass. You know, people just 
going out here playing major leagues and they're like just talking like, yeah, man, look at my portfolio and it, and this game is it's a it's a long game. So and you know that's what I've been noticing in people. They don't have a a strategy. They're just like, yeah, I'm gonna add another Netflix and yeah, Berkshire Hathaway. I'm gonna add another one to that just because you know it looks like it's going up and you know, but they really don't understand the balance of how to really grow their portfolio because really the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. And if you really think about it, um, you know, the more you put in, like um, I, I saw a chart with Warren Buffett. He at the age of fourteen he had five thousand. Then the next year he had. Uh, 8,000 in the following year it just every year he just added to and pretty much the comp the compound interest just started taking hold you know and I think the the hardest to achieve is getting your first 5,000 you know my mine is you know once I hit 10,000 I think my mind is gonna you know quantum leap into another type type of way of, another type of strategy because I'm starting to feel you know the compression now but um I'm starting to understand how to how to invest and play this game you know it's, and i just seeing um i'm not down in any other youtuber i commend them for investing because there's a lot of people that are um that are even afraid to invest money so my hat is off to you guys that are investing but my thing is have a strategy like what are you how are you going to grow grow your portfolio that's my thing and then i mean everybody that i've noticed is pretty much um 100 they're they're all heavy stock their stocks so if the market goes down, you're going to go down with it no matter how many stocks you got. So And you're going to hit that loss if you don't have nothing to keep you afloat. So that's why I started um, cutting down on my stock purchasing because I it's they're high. high. Yeah, in the up market, you're going to see it take off like like right now. You know, it's, it, I feel like it's taking off, but um, it's just those factors, too, when it comes down, you know, and you go into negative, you know, it kind of it kind of messes with your your mood and so I've I'm developing a strategy where you know that I'll never go into the negative because I'm gonna have index funds uh, bonds ETFs and then REITs to keep me afloat and then you know REITs they're gonna they pay the monthly dividend so it's gonna even keep you pretty much balanced too where you, you're not losing you're pretty much staying you know dropping down all the way to me I want to drop down no more than three percent stay within three six percent in a down market you know, and just keep adding to my portfolio. You got to make your uh, monthly deposits too. You know, people think like, oh, okay, this is it. And I'm just going to let it grow. Yeah, you you could do that. But it's, it ain't when you add to it, to your portfolio, you'll see the, the, the growth go even, even stronger and faster with the monthly deposits. So that's why with me, I came up with, uh, I'm going to deposit a thousand a month. And then 600 of, it, of that is going to buying stocks. Uh, 300 of it is going to index funds, $50 going to bonds ETF, and then another 50 is to REITs. And then that's pretty much my formula for 2019. So pretty much um, I'm going to see how it is. I'm going to post daily to let you guys see like, you know, my strategy and how it's working and, and really break it down and let you guys understand that um, have have some clarity, you know, don't get caught up in the, in the emotional game of stock going up, stop, that's what they do, you know, because they're highly volatile, so, and my thing is I invest in aggressive stocks, moderate stocks, um, defensive stocks, uh, stocks that pay dividends, stocks that don't pay dividends, but they are high, um, high, uh, high growth, so, and those are tech stocks, so, and, and you know, I'm just learning little by little, on how to invest and really um, I just started out with the basis I'm coming out going over companies that you guys use every day but nobody talks about so that that's my thing um, like for example um, iShares iShares is owned by BlackRock BlackRock is a financial company a lot of people don't know you know once you know next month I'm gonna buy a share of BlackRock because I know they own iShares and iShares is the top index fund in the world, followed by Spider. Spider is owned by State Street, so State Street is is, is another is a a stock is a bank out there. A lot of people don't talk about, but State Street owns Spider, and then you have the S and P, which is which S and P index funds, which is owned by S and P Global. So I'm gonna purchase a share of S and P Global because I know 
they own all the S&Ps. And then Vanguard, Vanguard um, is owned by Van, the Vanguard Group, but they're private, so I can't buy the Vanguard Group because they're a private company, but I can buy their index funds. So it's, it's pretty much a lot of, and they're going to be around. Like there's even NASDAQ, um, that's, that's for, um, there's NASDAQ on here. There's, uh, Dun & Bradstreet. There's a company, Visa, MasterCard. You don't hear people talking about these. VeriSign, Equifax, TransUnion. What about those companies that we use every day? FICO. We use those. I mean, it's the, all these companies are embedded into the system and you don't hear nobody talking about these companies. But if you invest in these companies, because these companies support the Federal Reserve system, everything is all, all one. So, and that's pretty much my strategy on how I'm going to um, invest for 2019. So, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. Um, this is the finance sector part two. The first company is CME Group. CME Group. And remember, all if you're if you're a trader, this you look at those numbers. But if you're a long time investor, this is the number that you wanna always look at this number on a daily, your percentage. That's the number to keep you afloat. So if you know if you go into the negative, you're too you're you're too much you you're too heavy in stocks. You know. Put some put some index funds in there, some bonds, ETFs, and some REITs to keep you afloat. So in a down market and then, you know, when already in the up market, if you're in stock, it's going to take off. That's why it's a gimme, but it's balancing when, when you hit the, the corrections or the bear markets or the, the lows, when it go, it dips, you want to always stay in positive and keep your money afloat and never go into negative. Okay. The first, uh, finance company is CME group. Okay. Let's look at the five year. You see, nobody talks about, I mean, I bet you don't see stuff like this, you know. So that's an upward trend. Uh, peaked at $193.73 on November 16, 2018. The current market price is $177.44. About CME Group Incorporated operates as a security and comedy exchange company. Excuse me. It provides the risk management and investment needs of customers around the globe. The company offers a wide range of products across various asset classes based on interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agricultural, commodities, metals, weather, and real estate. CME Group brings buyers and sellers together through its CME Globex electronic trading platform across the globe and its open outcry trading facilities in Chicago and New York City. The company also provides clearing and settlement services for exchange traded contracts as well as for cleared over-the-counter derivatives transactions. It also offers market data services including live quotes, delayed quotes, market reports, and a comprehensive historical data service and has expanded into the index services business through CME Group Index Services. CME Group was founded in 18... 98 and is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. The current CEO is Terrence A. Duffy, employees 2,830, headquarters Chicago, Illinois, founded in 1898, been around, you see, been around. Market cap, 60.76 billion, large cap, uh, PE ratio, 13.38, dividend yield, 1.81. Buy 42%, hold 53%, those two together more than 75%. There you have it. That's the first finance company. The second finance company is VeriSign. I don't know if you guys that, that use credit and you have to sign um, the receipt. This is this is the company. Let's look at the five year. As you can see, another upward. Upward trend, hockey stick. Um, 
it peaked on September 14th, 20, uh, 2018 at $163. Oh, no, that is, that's not a peak. Oh, so it's past its peak. Yeah, it, it peaked. It peaked on September 14, 2018 at $163.65. Pretty much now it's past the peak at market price $173.94. So you, as you can see, it's growing. About VeriSign Incorporated engages in the provision of domain name registry services and internet security. Its products include security services consisting of distributed denial of service protection services, VeriSign iDefense security intelligence services, and managed domain name system services. The company was founded by D. James Bid Bidzos on April 12, 1995 and is headquartered in Reston, Virginia. The current CEO is D. James Bid Bidzos, employees 952. Headquarters, Reston, Virginia, founded in 1995, market cap $21.05 billion, large, P.E. ratio 42.52, dividend yield zero. Buy 17%, hold 67%, those two together more than 75%. And people use VeriSign every day, I mean that's a high growth, it's a high growth company. Okay, the third company is, we've all heard of this one, Visa. Let's go to the five year. As you can see, another, look at, look at the way it's trending. These are all finance company that nobody talks about. Um, it peaked at on September 21st, 2018 at $150.05. Uh, current market price, $141.24. Uh, pretty much, I own a share, so I bought in at $117.92. Currently, my equity is $141.25. Um, $141 um, so... I'm up $23.33 or $23.35, so can't go wrong with Visa. Visa Incorporated engages in the provision of payment services. It also facilitates global commerce through the transfer of value and information among global network of consumers, merchants, financial institutions, businesses, strategic partners and government entities it offers debit card credit card prepaid prepaid products commercial payment solutions and global atm the company was founded by d hawk in 1970 and is headquartered in san francisco california west side where i'm currently at bay area the current ceo is alfred f kelly jr employees 17,000. Headquarters, San Francisco, California. Founded in 1970. Market cap, $313.75 billion. That's a mega cap. The P.E. ratio, 31.47. Dividend yield, 0.55. Buy, 93%. Hold, 8%. Those two together, huh. More than 100. That's 101. I don't know if that's an error or not. And then this pretty much the dividends. Okay, let me uh, let me get back to what I was explaining in the beginning. Okay, I got so June, July, August, September. So these are quarterly payments, as you can see, an increase. But my th okay, now it's at twenty five. So what, I, what my strategy in the future is pretty much I want I want to buy. So I have one share. So buy three more shares, which will give me a dollar. So that's pretty much up. Any any companies that pay dividends, um, I want to start receiving minimum a dollar. So I'll start tracking it that way instead of um, collecting cents. But you know, as as of now, I mean, I might have to go with the cents. But my strategy is pretty much to make it a minimum of a dollar. So in the future, uh, I will purchase three more shares of Visa. You know, once once I see it's at a uh, a nice buying point, so. I'm not just gonna go in blinded and just buy three, three shares of Visa just to get the dollar. I'm gonna be strategic and buy it at a, uh, 
a price point where it's it's reasonable for me and it's it, it's not I'm not buying it you know at the peak so as as you know especially with stocks they go up and that they're very highly volatile highly volatile that's what I'm learning too and I'm respecting it more yeah and when when the market's up yeah we're all ju jumping and doing jumping jacks and cartwheels and flips and all that we're excited but when it goes down you you everybody just run runs for the hills you know or they go in their little holes and they they wait till it goes up but you know you never hear anybody talking about hey I, uh even in the, in the down market um I'm still up 3% up 6% look at this you know the reason why I'm able to stay afloat because I have um I have security protocols in there. I have look at these index funds that keep it afloat. Look at these bonds ETF that keeps it afloat. Look at these REITs. So Okay, the fourth uh finance company is Morningstar. And I I came up with these companies just by um uh, Pretty much googling and and doing research. I mean, as you can see, upward trend. I mean, it took off. Um, it peaked on August thirty first, twenty eighteen, at one hundred forty one hundred forty two dollars and thirty two cents. Market price one hundred twenty four. Current market price is one twenty four uh, and ninety cents. About. Morningstar Incorporated engages in the provision of independent investment research. It offers Morningstar Data, Morningstar Direct, Morningstar Investment Management, Morningstar Advisor work, Workstation, Workplace Solutions, PitchBook Data, Morningstar.com, Morningstar Enterprise Components, Morningstar Research, Morningstar Credit Ratings, and Morningstar Indexes. The company was founded by Joseph D. Man Suero on May 16th, 1984, and is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. The current CEO is Kunal Kapoor. Employees, 4,920. Headquarters, Chicago, Illinois. Founded in 1984. Market cap, 5.37 billion. PE ratio, 29.87. Dividend yield, 0.97. Okay, there you go. That's Morningstar. Last but not least, people that use credit should know this one, Equifax. Okay, let's look at the five-year. Yeah, this is, okay. It's Equifax, a little shaky. I mean, but it's been in the news for ba bad publicity, so um, that's probably why it looks like that. But they're one of the three... Uh, credit viewers that pretty much gauge our credit here in the U.S. So um, it peaked on August 4th, 2017 at $140, $145.43. Uh, the current mar market price is $107.14. About Equifax Incorporated engages in the provision of information solutions and human resources business process outsourcing services that operates through the following business segments US information solutions international workforce solutions and global consumer solutions the US information solutions segment includes consumer and commercial information services mortgage loan origination information financial marketing services and identity management the international segment offers information technology and services to support debt collections and recovery management in Europe and Latin America. The Workforce Solutions segment covers employment, income, and Social Security number verification services, as well as complementary payroll-based transactions and employment tax management services. The Global Consumer Solutions segment set, sell consumer and credit information to resellers. The company was founded by Kate Cater Wolford and Guy Wolford in 1899 and is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. Raised in raised in Georgia, raised in Georgia. Atlanta United Soccer Club and Atlanta Falcons Football Club. And Georgia Bulldogs College Football. 
The current CEO is Mark W. Bigor. Employees, 10,300. Headquarters, ATL, Georgia. Founded in 1899. As you can see, it's been around. It's not going anywhere. It's, been, it's solid since 1899. These are things that people don't look at, you know, gauging companies. Uh, market cap, 13.00 billion. Large cap. Market uh, PE ratio, 29.12. Dividend yield 1.32. Buy 58%. Hold 37%. Those two together, more than 75%. So there you have it. Um, these are the these are the five finance companies, and the total. The total investment for these five finance company comes out to $724.43. Remember, go to the all. That's all. Long-term investors, look at the all. Um, in conclusion, CME Group, one share of CME Group is $183.44. Dividend yield, 1.81. VeriSign, one share of VeriSign is $170.52. Dividend yield, zero. Visa. One share of Visa is $139.85, dividend yield 0 0.55. Morningstar. One share of Morningstar is $122.68, dividend yield 0 0.97. Last but not least, Equifax. Equifax. One share of Equifax is $107.94, dividend yield 1.32. Outro. Subscribe to the channel. Comment any questions or recommendations you have. Like if the content was inspiring for you. And share this information with other global stock investors. While you're slaying dragons, I'll be taming them. Keeping investors happy. <laughs>